Welcome to Your Success Podcast. I'm Mo. Uh, no Anglos today, unfortunately, as I'm up in Leeds. Um, and we have got a Facebook Live on as well, so if I'm looking at a couple of different um, cameras, that'll be why. I'm really thrilled today to be speaking to a design expert on successful design um, and what are the core principles of good design. Um, what I love about these principles, we're going to chat about it, is really that they can be applied to anything, um, whether you're designing a piece of software, a property, a room, a product, or anything really. So joining me today is Julian Morris. Julian is a property developer, an investor, um, renovation specialist who's been working in the industry since 1997. Julian has worked for various investor clients from small portfolio builders to large asset management companies. And his own portfolio of work includes numerous student and HMO refurbishments, commercial office space, renovation projects, apartment block furnishing contracts, and show home installations for both local and national developers. So quite a comprehensive CV. Yeah. So Julian, thank you for joining me on your success it's podcast. It's a pleasure. Um, thank you. And um, we are recording in a hotel, so um, there might be some background noise during the interview. So Julian, can you tell us a bit about your story and what really got you interested in design? I'm a creative person, yeah. so I was into art when I was at school. Uh, and I guess, you know, I got into property because I needed to job. I needed a job. Yeah. I needed to do something. I needed a career. So, you know, I had been a DJ before that. So that's been <laughs> nice. creative. Yeah. But I think if you're a creative person, it has to find an outlet somewhere. So um, I've just enjoyed the process of just creating really nice I'll say product, it's yeah. property, yeah. but you know, creating really good product because a lot of my clients expect me to do a good job. They want their product to perform well, and I found that you know, if you make it look nice, it's going to perform better. Yeah. So you know, we're, I'm a landlord as well, so I want my properties to sell faster. I want them to get better rent. So you know, I will do that through design. And it's quite interesting, your, your story, you, you didn't start off doing that, so you've actually put a lot of research into that. Well, you're never going to know it all, yeah. I guess. But and when you study, into, if you study like a normal interior design course, they're going to teach you domestic interior design, working for a client who might want anything. When you're looking at developing uh, HMOs or rooms or student accommodation, it is more of a product that has to be designed to suit the who's going to be using it and its use. So it is more of a commercial product. So you can't really... Uh, look at interior design in the same way as you would if you're just doing a basic interior design course. Commercial design is different. So I taught myself commercial interior design because, you know, I didn't want to go take myself to university and spend years doing it. I needed to apply it quickly. I had clients and I was just doing general refurbs. So, you know, I was thinking about it when people really weren't expecting me to. Can you just talk us through some of, I know there's, there's a few of them, so we probably haven't got time to go through them all, but just some of the core principles of design and how people can apply those in in their kind of, in their life. Are we prepared to give the secrets away? It's just some of them, just yeah, a couple okay. maybe. <laughs> uh, well, uh, the reason why I've looked at the principles of design is because I want to design product that lasts a long time, yeah. it's durable. So, you know, if you want to design product that lasts, then you can't look at what everyone else is doing. You have to look at, you have to look at what people are doing that create great products. So the principles uh, basically are, number one, durability. Yeah. So if you're designing a product, it's got to be designed so the design itself yeah. lasts. Yeah. Uh, so durability doesn't necessarily mean it's strong. Yeah. It means that it's going to last. Now, in business, as you know, things change. Absolutely. Well, you want to design a product that even though everything's changing, it's it's easily, it's easily, you can change it easily. It is so, durable. So you, can from that so you can update it easily without update. having to easily update it without having to just start again yeah. from scratch. Yeah. Yeah. Um, trendy design, yeah. by the way, is not durable design. <laughs> so a lot of people fall into that trap. They want to be the most trendiest. Yeah. They want to have the trendiest product. Well, the problem with trend is, is it doesn't last that and long. And everyone's doing it, I guess. Is well, the other part people of will it. copy it. Yeah. And once everyone copies it, it's no longer trendy anymore. So. You, you really don't want to look at trend if you want to create durable product. The next one is simplicity. So what I found is that product that really lasts a long time, looks great, is normally fairly simple in its design. A lot of the uh, user experience people look at simplicity when it comes to design. Yeah. So you're talking about software. Yeah. You know, if you're going to create a website, how easy is it going to be to navigate? Yeah. The simpler that you can make it, the better it is. Um, innovation. So it's got to be innovative. It's got to stand out. Now, the thing with innovation is most people, they try to copy. They don't try to innovate. Mm. That's a hard thing. But then you know what? It, it, it's not easy to innovate. Yeah. But you can do that through simple decorating techniques. So if everyone, you know, paints their house in a certain way, look for another alternative decorating technique, and you're being innovative. And it doesn't cost you that much to do it. Technology. What technology are you going to integrate into the project? Yeah. So there's that. Uh, functionality is a big one. Yeah, that's, so, that's probably my favourite. Well, functionality, functionality is yeah. a big thing throughout yeah. product design. Yeah. Whatever pro you know, if you're looking at cars, is it you know, it can look great. 
But if it doesn't function well, yeah. then it's not a great design. Yeah. So, you know, Apple, for example, focus a lot on the user experience within the product, which is why it works so well and why they're able to charge so much for it. So functionality is a thing that's very difficult that you need to think it through. And that's the, another principle is good design is well thought through. So, you know, for people that like to think about design at the last minute, it's not going to be well thought through. So it's not going to be great design. And particularly relevant in construction and in, in property where you have to, if you don't think about it r up front, then you're going to be too far down the line to actually make the changes you need to make in terms of what That's why it's thorough. If like you that. look at any yeah. great designers and you look at interviews with great designers and they'll say, well, what are, the, what are your principles? All, well, they will all say, it takes time and a lot of thought to create a great product. And, it, and the fact is, the simpler it is, the better it works, probably the more thought has gone into that product to yeah. make it like that. Absolutely, so. yeah. And so where do you think people go wrong in terms of design? Yeah. They don't think about it enough. Yeah. They don't look at it in depth. Yeah. They will just look at the feature wall or the cushions and think that's fine. But the problem within this industry now is that the competition is getting a lot more experience. The competition is throwing a lot more money at the project product. So, you know, if you want to create an, a really pretty average to lower, low spec product, then paint a feature wall. If you want to compete with the big players that are coming into the market now, which are the build to rent sector, just think they're employing very experienced interior designers that know their stuff. They're putting a lot of money into design because they know that that is what sells product. So those are the, those are people we're up against. So if you don't put any thought into the design, then you're just not going to compete. Sorry, no, sorry. Well, I'm just saying if you go back, yeah. you know, if you look at HMOs six years ago, when everyone's saying, oh, don't bother putting in coloured walls, don't bother putting in this, that and the other, well, so that product doesn't stand up today. So if you want to create durable product, we can't just yeah. do what everyone's doing today. And if we look at what competition is going to be like as we move forward, it's going to be far more professional. And, and what, are the, what are the tangible benefits for people of thinking about design properly? Well, I'd say what are the, what are the, what the, are the, what are the consequences yeah, 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 of not thinking yeah, about yeah. it, I think is the important thing. I think if you don't think about design, your product isn't going to last. Mm. If your product isn't going to last, then you're not going to make the kind of profits that you want. So I don't think it's a case of well, what advantages has design got. I think what are the disadvantages? Of, yeah, you can't, can't afford not yeah, to think about yeah. it. If you don't think about design, you're going to be like Kodak. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. And do you want to be like Kodak? Absolutely not. No way. Um, what would you say to people that say, oh, but I don't have an eye for design? You hear that quite a lot. Well, if you, look at, uh, if you look at economics and you look at high-performing businesses uh, and I guess you know if we're talking to people that are looking at property yeah. I guess if you ask them well why are you getting involved in property well I want freedom well, this I is want... actually so this is property but it's also broader because we have a lot of big people that are interested in business and just success well if general, you're looking at success to, yeah. you know do you want to be successful mm. yeah you know I want to be successful well you know you're not going to be successful if you don't focus on the detail on your product yeah. because it's all about how you know how, how you can make it work so you know what was the the question the, what, what was the um, question People, people say have the excuse, oh, I don't have an well, eye for then design. Fine. Well, then you're not going to have a great product, yeah. are you? So if you don't have an eye for design, do you think a, a big player coming into the market who's going to be investing you know, multi-millions of pounds in, in a product, so in build-to-rent developments, do you think they're going to go, well, we're not great at design, so we're not, we're not going to bother? Where are they going to get? It's just an excuse. Get them? It is just an excuse. But if you were saying, yeah. to, on the one yeah. hand, you know, I want to be successful, and then on the other hand, saying, well, saying, well, I, don't really, I can't really focus on design, well, then you're not going to be successful. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah. you would say outsource to people, experts, well, that is one of training. The, and yeah, if you, look at econo if you look at the economic cycle and you look at, you know, how do you survive in a market where you've got a lot of competition, yeah. it will say, use good people. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, that's what everyone says, yeah. you know, yeah. use good people. So if you're saying, well, I'm not that good at design, well, that doesn't mean, you know, you just give up. Yeah, absolutely. Use good people. Are there, are there any other final tips that you want to give people on successful design or just success in general, just closing? <laughs> yeah, Steve Jobs, right. he gave a very good quote, Apple. And yeah. this was, I guess, their whole mantra was, we design product that we would like to use ourselves. So I would say to you is if you're going to be designing product, design a product that you would like to use yourself. Yeah. Mm. And that's, the, that's really it. You know, people talk about room, oh, what's the minimum room size? Well, don't what worry about what the minimum in? room yeah. size is. <laughs> if it's not big enough for you to feel comfortable yeah. in, then don't, it's yeah. not good enough for anybody. Yeah. So, you know, if again, people talk about success. Well, if you want good customers, if you want, pe you want to achieve a better mm. price for your product, then don't yeah. give them people something you wouldn't buy. Yeah.
Fantastic. I'm going to put you on the spot now, Julian. Um, this podcast is all about success, and as such, we ask every, everyone we interview, what does success mean to you? You know, if you say, well, I want to be really happy, yeah. well, where there's a high, there's a low. Mm. So if you always, you're never going to be happy all the time, are you? Yeah. But I think the hardest thing to do is achieve contentment. Be happy with what you've got. Yeah. Success, you know, you, you can have, once you get to a certain level, once you go beyond that, well, what do you do? You just pay more money for a ring or you buy a more expensive phone. Yeah. <laughs> but that's yeah. all you've got, yeah, yeah, really. Yeah. So I think fulfillment is more important. Okay. So success comes with contentment. Yeah. Contentment means you're successful. Okay, so you I can agree. have nothing and be content. I completely agree, yeah. Um, no, so I think that's really it. You can, you know, if you, if you focus, I see a lot of people saying, I want to leave my job. Well, what happens when you've got enough money and you do leave your job and you, all you've got is money? Are you going to be content? <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. So you get a lot of people that when they win the lottery, yeah. no, they, no, no, they no, mess up. Yeah. So you know, there's no point in, in going for success if you don't understand that is it, you know, if it's not going to make you happy, well, what's the point of success? Fantastic answer. Um, so thank you so much for your time. Um, what's the best way for people to get in contact with you? Uh, email. Yep. Julian at iconliving.co.uk. That's I-C-O-N. So. I-C-O-N living. I-C-O-N living. So the web, all through my website. So yep. it's www.iconliving.co.uk. Brilliant. Fantastic. So we want to know, thank you again, Julian, yeah. for your time. We want to know your experiences um, on good design, bad design. What experiences have you got of that? Send us an email at hello at yoursuccesspodcast.com or get in touch on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Um, so thank you for listening. Please leave us a review. And just a reminder, we do have a book coming out. So head to tiny.cc forward slash your book to sign up for the exclusive um, launch. I've been Mo. Unfortunately, no Anglos today. Um, but we'll see you again on the next episode of Your Success Podcast.